Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Do Politicians Practice What They Preach? In this video we're going to be looking at, Are Democrats Really Democratic? Now, this series is brought to you by our new book, Are All Lives Equal? Why Cost-Benefit Analysis Values Rich Lives More and How Philosophy Can Fix It. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more. Now, in the last video we looked at several definitions of democracy. In this video we're going to look at whether U.S. politicians that identify as Democrats and the Democratic Party as a whole actually supports democracy. We'll focus on the components of democracy that do not really overlap with liberalism and progressivism that we're covering in other videos. Specifically, we'll focus on electoral, participatory, and deliberative components. If you want to learn more about those specific components, or democracy in general, check out the previous video. Now, Democracy is very simply rule by the people. We will start with positions taken by Democrats and the Democratic Party that support democracy, then we'll look at some positions that oppose it. So, at its core, any politician that supports the institution of free and fair elections is it democratic in the broadest sense. Such a view might be assumed of any politician, but recently a frightening number of Republicans have opposed even the most basic tenets of democracy, arguing for things that look more like Christian nationalism. Democrats generally support the institution of democratic elections, even when they lose, as do many, but not all, unfortunately, Republicans. In foreign policy, Democrats have shown a willingness to support democracies around the world. While the Trump administration broke with U.S. Democratic allies in Europe and cozied up to Russia, the Biden administration has supported a Democratic administration in Ukraine against an oppressive dictatorship in Russia with the help of many Republicans. Further, Democrats support expanding voting rights to more people. They support more days of early voting, in-mail voting, mail-in voting, more polling places, etc. They support making voting more accessible to more citizens. This might be out of a selfish desire to win because the people who do not vote lean democratic, but it still makes democracy more participatory. So even if it's out of a selfish desire, it's still leaning towards more democracy. However, Democrats do not always support democracy. One clear example of this is gerrymandering, the practice of shaping political districts to gain an advantage disproportionate to your vote share. Gerrymandering is practiced by both Democrats and Republicans, despite being opposed by a majority of people in the country. It is deeply anti-democratic because it makes various districts quote-unquote safe for one party or the other, meaning that voters do not really have the ability to choose who governs them. Sometimes, democratic gerrymandering is done in favor of ensuring that minority communities have representation, though this can often backfire by sapping surrounding communities of minority votes. And that idea isn't necessarily a democratic one, but more a liberal one or even a progressive one, and so isn't even in that sense really being democratic. And so this Many kinds of gerrymandering, even for possibly quote-unquote good reasons, may be challenging to the very idea of democracy. Now, the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan may have started under a Republican administration, but it was completed under a Democratic one. This led to the takeover of the country by a hostile theocratic government. The American-backed former government may have been imperfect in many ways, but it was striving towards democracy. Walking away from it and the people that relied on it seems quite anti-democratic. Another way in which Democrats fail to live up to their title is in failing to support direct democracy in the forms of ballots initiatives and referendums. Many states that are fully controlled by Democrats lack the ability of people to enact laws by referendum or initiative. Representatives, regardless of party, do have incentives to oppose direct democracy that can overturn or replace them. Similar to gerrymandering, this is a opposition within direct versus representative democracy, where even self-proclaimed Democrats don't necessarily have an incentive to actually support democracy and direct democracy, because it could mean that they were out of a job or that their ideas were being overturned by popular will. There's a tension between liberalism and democracy that Democrats sometimes fail to acknowledge, and that Democrats sometimes fall on the side of liberalism. Liberalism as opposed to democracy. 
Liberalism says that we should protect the rights of everyone, including minorities, even when that means going up against the will of a majority. You might imagine a society where a majority of people think that a particular minority should be oppressed. A Solely a democracy that had no liberal values would say, yep, that's what we should do. We should oppress the minority because that is the will of the people. Liberal democracies must strike a balance between honoring the views of the majority and protecting the rights of the minority, even when that minority is unpopular. There are many situations where ideologies are at odds with each other that you may not realize. One of them is between the central tenets of economics, that value should be measured in willingness to pay, and the philosophical idea that all lives are of equal value, and that people have equal capacity for receiving benefit or cost, regardless of their wealth. To learn more about this contradiction, how it gives rise to a contradiction, how economics values some lives more than others, and how philosophy can fix it, check out our new book out now in paperback on Amazon, Are All Lives Equal? Or if you want to learn more, go to carneades.org. You can check out a couple blogs on the book as well as read the first chapter. So the answer to the question, are Democrats really democratic, is sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. This is all the more reason for you to research the actual positions of who you vote for. Just because someone calls themselves a Democrat doesn't mean they actually support all the aspects of democracy. What do you think? Are there examples you can think of where so-called Democrats actually take positions that are opposed to the fundamental tenets of democracy? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this video and you want to see more like it, as well as the rest of the videos in this series so you don't miss them. Watch this video and more. You're at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.